Today, we're digging into a used oil analysis that has one number that is just, well, it's pretty alarming. It brings up a huge question. Could an oil that's literally designed to protect an engine actually be harming it? Let's get right into it. Okay, here it is. This is the number that set this whole thing off, 33 parts per million. Now, just by itself, that might not mean much to you, but believe me, in the world of engine health, this is a massive red flag waving right in our faces. So what are we even looking at? This is the amount of iron that was found just floating around in a sample of used engine oil. And iron means something made of steel inside that engine is wearing down. The real question is, how much wear is too much? And this right here is where the problem really snaps into focus. For this kind of engine, the average amount of iron you'd expect to see is around 11 parts per million. This sample, it came back at 33. That's three times the normal level of wear. That is a gigantic jump, and we absolutely need to find out why. So that brings us to the core mystery, you know? Are we staring down the barrel of a serious mechanical problem, like some critical parts are just grinding themselves into oblivion? Or could there be something else going on, something totally unexpected hiding in this data? Okay, let's dive into this. To crack this case, we've got to look at all the evidence. So let's start by digging into the other red flags from the lab report and get a little bit of context on the car itself. All right, so our patient here is a 2017 Honda Accord. It's got a pretty respectable 95,000 miles on it. The oil is Valvoline's Restore and Protect, and it was in the engine for about 4,250 miles. But here's a detail that's going to be really important later. That mileage was put on over more than eight months. So here's our evidence board, the whole shebang from the lab. We've already talked about that shocking iron number. But take a closer look. Aluminum is a little high. Silicon is more than double the average. And manganese, wow, it's an incredible eight times higher than normal. And then you've got these two down here, TBN and TAN. They tell a completely different but just as important part of the story. We'll get to them, for sure. All right, let's zero in on the main suspect, that crazy high iron reading. I mean, where in the world could 33 parts per million of iron come from? Well, it turns out we have two very different theories. Hypothesis A is pretty simple. It's engine wear, plain and simple. This particular engine model had a known issue with its timing chain tensioner. It would cause a rattle on cold starts, a classic sign of metal-on-metal -metal wear that would absolutely shed iron into the oil. But hypothesis B. Now this is where things get really interesting. The car's owner was using a fuel additive that has a compound in it called ferrocene. And here's the chemical twist. Research shows that this stuff, ferrocene, which is used as an octane booster, actually breaks down in the engine and releases elemental iron as a byproduct. What does that mean? It means it's totally possible that some, maybe even most, of this iron isn't coming from the engine parts at all, but from the fuel additive itself. So the high iron is not an open and shut case of engine wear. Let's see what the other clues in this report tell us, because they definitely help build out the full picture. Okay, so the aluminum is a bit high, which might point to a little bit of piston wear. Not great, but not a disaster. The silicon, while it looks bad, is probably not from dirt getting into the engine. It's more likely from the new oil doing its job and cleaning off old gunk left behind by bad fuel in the past. And that ridiculously high manganese? Well, guess what? That's another known ingredient in some fuel additives. So that's another big check mark for hypothesis B. You know, with all these warning signs, there's actually some really, really good news buried in this report. A few key metals came back completely clean, which tells us that some of the most critical, expensive parts of the engine are doing just fine. Just look at this. Chromium, which we look for from piston rings, zero. Copper, lead, and tin, all of which would tell us the main bearings are wearing out, all zero. This is a huge sigh of relief. It means the core rotating parts of the engine, the really important stuff, seem to be in fantastic shape. So if the engine's core seems okay, what about the oil itself? We've been so focused on the metals coming from the engine, but a huge part of any analysis is checking the health of the lubricant. And this, my friends, is where our story takes another pretty dramatic turn. First, let's talk about TBN, or total base number. The easiest way to think about this is as the oil's defensive shield. It's a package of additives that are there for one reason to neutralize all the nasty, corrosive acids that naturally build up inside an engine from combustion. And on the other side of the battle, you have TAN, or total acid number. This measures the strength of the enemy attack, all those harmful acids that are trying to eat away at your engine. 
As your oil gets older, its TBN shield gets weaker and the tan acid attack gets stronger, and you never ever want the acid to break through the shield. So, the TBN in this oil sample, it came in at 2.8. To give you some context, this oil starts its life with a TBN of around 6.7. So after 4,250 miles and over eight months, its defensive shield is getting pretty thin. This is basically the bare minimum you wanna see. And here is the knockout blow. The tan, the total acid number, came in at 4.8. The acid level is way higher than the oil's ability to fight it. The offense has completely overwhelmed the defense. The shield is broken. This is such a critical moment. When the TN number climbs past the TBN number, it's called a crossover, and it's bad news. The oil isn't just failing to protect the engine from corrosion anymore. At this point, the oil itself can become corrosive, and it starts actively eating away at the metal parts. Okay, we have looked at all the clues, the mysterious iron, the other weird metals, and the fact that the oil itself is basically shot. It's time to put all the pieces of this puzzle together and give our final diagnosis. So, what's the verdict? Well, it's not just one thing. That high iron is almost certainly a mix of the fuel additive messing with the numbers, plus some real wear from that old timing chain issue. The silicon? That's just the oil doing its cleaning job, no big deal. But the most urgent problem right now is that the oil itself is spent. And not because of the miles, but because of that long eight-month time frame to let all those acids build up and win the war. With that diagnosis, the game plan from here is crystal clear. Number one, the oil needs to be changed every six months at the absolute maximum. It doesn't matter how few miles are on it. Number two, to solve that iron mystery once and for all, stop using the fuel additive. That's the only way to know what's really going on. And finally, number three, do another oil analysis in just 2,000 miles to see how things are trending and get a clean new baseline. And all of this leaves us with a pretty important question to think about. Could that performance additive you're pouring in your tank actually be masking a real problem? Or worse, could it be creating a whole new one you didn't even know about? It's a powerful reminder that you really need to question what you're putting in your engine and trust the data to tell you what's truly going on inside.